Hey guys, welcome to the brush series where I talk about all of my favorite brushes, how I use them, and why I love them so much. If you enjoy this video, please make sure to like it and then subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified when new videos like this come out. Let's get started with these guys. I'm gonna show you here. I don't know if you can see all those, kinda. A little bit. So the first one I'm gonna start with is a liner brush. I guess I could have probably put this in the round brush category. Just get yourself one good liner brush. It doesn't have to be anything super specific. This one is a 5-0, but this one is really good for, let's scooch in here. Actually, I'm gonna scooch in on the bear. You see his beautiful eyes there? So this one is really good for making sure that you get a very clean line around the eye and you have a very good shape around the eye and you don't have any bleeding or anything. So because when you get paint on this, obviously it tapers to a very fine point. Um, that is what I usually use these guys for. And then also to put the whites in the eyes, sometimes I do use that guy. So this one is technically a filbert brush and I don't know, focus. It's not gonna, uh, kind of. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever watched like nail videos or anything like that, but it looks very similar to like an ombre brush that people use when they do nail art. Um, but this guy, he doesn't like the bristles don't, all the bristles don't go all the way up. So you can see, there we go. So you can see that they're just a little bit, um, there's a little bit less bristle at the end and it's really just meant to blend things. So y'all see that fox right there? So. This little guy is obviously very petite. I mean, you can see him compared to my hand. So for this brush, what I did here is I used this one to kind of just blend in his light to his dark right here. Very, very, very lightly. And then also the shadowing on his hip. So this just helps you kind of blend things um, and make them a little bit more seamless looking if, you're, if you want seamless lines and you want things to flow very well, then this is a really good brush to have on hand. Like I said, I just kind of, like you can see where his head is a little bit lighter and then a little bit darker. I use this guy just to drag some of these out. It really is helpful with animals if you're doing like animals that have fur and stuff like that. Uh, this is called, literally called a scumbler, which I think is fantastic. It's a great word for it. I'm, I'm sure it's a professional word, but it sounds like one that somebody's like, oh, it looks kind of scumbly, right? Um, so this guy I use a lot for texture and I use this a lot with my texture paste to create, like if you can see here, the bumpy texture, right? As far as actual painting goes, I used it to pop in a little, I wanted some highlights, like there was maybe a couple little wildflowers kind of here and there. So I used this guy to do that and you can see it left like a very imperfect circle and just little teeny dots that gave it kind of highlights. And so I like doing that because if you dry brush with one of these, you get a ton of texture. Um, they're awesome for texture. You can also use them on the trees. Let me show you here. Sorry, my floor is kind of wiggly in here. So on these trees too, I use that on the sides of these to do the highlights and everything. Another thing that you can use this brush for is, do you see like the light coming down here? So in order to do that, I used a straight edge I used a straight edge and then I used my liner brush and then I went down with a, with a wet white line. And then with this guy, I came in and I did this to scumble, <laughs> I love that word, to scumble it a little bit. And so it wasn't just one solid line and it looked like it was a little bit more ethereal, right? And a little bit more realistic. So this is one of my favorites for several reasons and I use it very frequently. So this is called a sword liner. I love this and I just came across this probably like six months ago or so and it has been a game changer for fur and for fine detail and if you can see it's very thin it tapers to like a needle point when you've got your wet paint on it it's very long and it's got this taper here so it can hold a lot of paint and you get a long um, you get a lot of work out of it like you don't need to go back like the round brushes. You don't need to go back and dip and then pull and dip and pull and dip and pull. Um, so this one I used for the outlines of the little wings right here, if you can see all this. And I probably only needed to dip this in paint like maybe twice to be able to get all of these you know, done with all the paint that was in it. So that's one reason why I absolutely love, love, love these guys. Um, oh, the scumbler though. 
if you can see the fuzz here, sorry for it to show you guys that. That's, I used the scumbler to get his little fuzz right here and make him look a little bit fluffy so you didn't have like the finish to fine lines. I also used it to get the highlight there. I forgot to show you guys that. But anyways, yes, sword liner is fantastic and if you're doing animal fur, if you're doing like a lion, a cat, a wolf, whatever it is, if you're doing whiskers at all, the sword liner is gonna get you extremely fine lines and it's you're gonna be able to get every individual hair in that photo uh, or in that painting and it is, it's a game changer. So I would recommend having these if you are doing animal uh, paintings. In conjunction with my fan brush, I used this guy here. This is a one inch something brush. I have no idea what the name for this is, I'm gonna be honest. To me, it looks like a blush brush because it looks like something I would have in my makeup kit, basically, right? I use these two brushes to make ethereal clouds like this. So the way that I do it, the way that I use both of these is I get a lot of wet white acrylic paint on this and I go around and I do this. And I just do the outline of whatever it is, the tops, right? So then I go in with this guy and it only needs to be a little bit wet. You don't want something that's soaking wet, otherwise you're gonna get drips and you're not gonna get like fluffy clouds. So you get it just a little bit wet and you go in and you go underneath them and you do this in a bunch of round circles until you get the shape that you want and you pull it down as much as you possibly can because clouds are obviously like, you don't have straight lines between clouds, right? They kind of all fluff into each other. So in order to get that appearance, you want them to be able to flow into each other. So let's say, I did this cloud right here, right? Um, I would pull it down as far as I can, like to start at the top with your clouds and then just keep going down. And then I would put this one over the top of it, pull that down as far as I can, and then keep going down, okay? Um, same thing with this fog down here. If you guys can see the fog that's going on, um, I use this to get that fog. And I used a, a translucent white to do that. Um, so this is a really good, just like fluffy, cloud, fog, mist, like what, like haze, whatever you're trying to do that needs to be really soft, this is a really good one to go with. Thank you for being here. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you do enjoy more content along these lines.